of HubSpot account is best for me? People are asking me this question all the time. So I decided to put together a quick guide to help you make this decision, to help you decide what's the best um, type of HubSpot subscription for your business. Um, you know, sometimes HubSpot free users, meaning people who are using a HubSpot free account, they come to me and say, look, you know, I'm using HubSpot free. Do I need to start paying? Is it worth paying for HubSpot or can I stick to a HubSpot free account? Or on the other hand, people who are already using a HubSpot paid account, they go, do I need to upgrade? Do I need to get a more expensive package? If so, which one, right? So there are many different types of questions around, you know, all the um, subscription types inside of HubSpot. And with this guide, we'll aim to sort of answer this question for you. Now, um, if you come to me today and you go, what kind of HubSpot account you recommend for my business? Um, my answer will be a little bit disappointing. And that's mainly because it depends, right? It depends a lot on your business. It depends on your team size. It depends on your budget. It depends on your needs, ultimately, your needs. Every business uses HubSpot in a unique way. Um, I my, my sort of HubSpot needs are different and yours, yours are different than your competitors even. And so there's really not a way of kind of giving you a, a packaged answer for this question. It really depends on what kind of needs you have. Um, but in, in, this, in this video, in this guide, we, we're going to be talking about a starting point and then starting questions that you can ask um, that will help you really sort of uh, make this decision in a better way. This is what I hope at least uh, with this to achieve with this guide here. Um, the best advice I can give you here is get started with the list. So create a list of all the things you want to accomplish with your HubSpot account. Um, and I want you to have this written because with this list, you have items in your list and you'll be able to research if you need, you know, research literally on Google or on the HubSpot website, if you need a paid account for that or not, or if yes, then what kind of account and so on and so on. So it's easier to visualize things and understand things better uh, in a written way, in my opinion, at least. So, Create a list of your HubSpot needs, things you want to do with your HubSpot account. In your list, you could include things such as, you know, I want to send emails automatically after form submissions, or I want to assign new leads to my sales team in an automated way. I don't want to have to do this manually, or I want to create blog posts with HubSpot, or I want to create a whole website with HubSpot, or, you know, I, I want to use HubSpot for social media scheduling or something like that. So put... Put in your list all the things that you're hoping to achieve with HubSpot. That's really the best starting point. Um, once you have this list, um, then you'll be able to research on what kind of um, packages address those specific needs. What I'm going to do now is talk in general terms what my suggestions are for um, the decision between a HubSpot free account versus a HubSpot paid account and also the decision between different types of HubSpot paid accounts. Now, please have in mind that um, I'm recording this video now it's July 2022, right? And so depending on when you're looking at this guide here, um, things might have changed. Uh, this is because HubSpot is evolving every day. Um, and sometimes what they do is they add new features to subscription packages. Sometimes they remove features, add new ones and so on. Um, so this is all to say that please have this in mind um, and, and obviously, you know, do your own research uh, for the things that I'm saying here, just because of timing, really, right? So generally speaking, let's first address the question HubSpot free versus HubSpot paid. So generally speaking, stick to a HubSpot free account if you're happy with basic CRM functionality, meaning you're happy with just simply having all your contacts in one place only. You're used to doing spreadsheets or using different types of CRM and having to connect them all. You're happy with just having your contacts database in one place, right? That's the strength of HubSpot CRM. Um, you are happy with manually changing contact properties. For example, one contact property that you might want to change constantly is marketing status. You can only send marketing emails to people who are set as marketing contacts. You can go about this the automated way 
you could create a workflow for automatically setting people's marketing contacts, or you can do this the manual way, which is you select all your contacts, you go to edit and you click on set as marketing contacts and you do this periodically, once a week or once a month or whenever you want. So you're happy with changing things up, properties, the manual way. And you're happy with sending one-on-one emails to people manually as well. With a HubSpot free account, you cannot automate things. And so everything here has to be manual, sending emails and so on and so on. Basic mark you're happy with basic marketing functionality, meaning you don't need much else apart from basic marketing emails with a basic layout, you no know, simple design and things like that. You don't need to customize your emails much. You're happy with HubSpot forms that are also not super customizable, so to say, so you can't really adapt it according to your branding. You can still publish HubSpot forms um, into your website from a HubSpot free account, but you can't really customize them much. You're happy with creating and publishing landing pages outside of your custom domain, for example. What I mean by that is uh, inside of a HubSpot free account, you create and publish landing pages, but they will appear inside of a kind of a looking weird looking URL, so to say. They You won't be able to add them to your actual custom domain, your, you know, business name.com, your web, your business address, your business website. Um, you're happy with HubSpot branding on your marketing assets. This is a big one. So using HubSpot free, yes, you end up, uh, you know, creating landing pages, forms, or any other types of marketing assets. And there will be a little nice message from HubSpot at the bottom saying, you know, this was created with HubSpot free. Please click here to create your account or something like that. And you can really change that. And so HubSpot branding will be inside of your marketing assets. If this is okay with you, totally fine. Um, you also, you're also happy with basic sales functionality, meaning you don't really need to create your own custom reports. You're happy with using HubSpot's own, um, sort of report templates. Um, and you, um, you're happy with only one deal pipeline. You don't need multiple pipelines. You're happy with only one HubSpot meeting link for your account, meeting link being that calendar widget where people can book meetings with you. Uh, and you're in general, you're happy in doing things manually, manually sending sales emails, manually sending marketing emails, and, and again, doing things manually without being able to automate. Summing up everything I said, um, if you don't need advanced customization and automation, you don't need that. And you're happy doing things manually and having some kind of limitations for certain features, for example, a limit in the number of lists you can create and things like that. And if you have a small database and you really don't need too much phone or email support, if you agree with this statement here, and if in general you're, you're okay with these things that I've just talked about, then definitely, you know, stick to a HubSpot free account. There's absolutely no reason for you to go for a HubSpot paid account. Um, it's all about sort of, doing everything that HubSpot has to offer, but with some limitations there, right? Maybe if you're happy with that, and if you agree with this statement, you know, this is totally fine. Um, just go ahead with a HubSpot free account and keep using it as, as much as you want. Usually what I, what I find is that a HubSpot free account is great for early stage businesses. So businesses who are not yet in that position to allocate budget for, you know, a marketing automation platform for a CRM like HubSpot. Or solopreneurs, you know, I have clients as well who are literally, it's a, you know, the business is one person only. And so they really don't need to automate too much. They have a small database and they are using HubSpot all by themselves. And so as solopreneurs or any type of um, other, yes, I guess, uh, businesses that are one person only, then, you know, in this case, it's totally fine to go ahead with a HubSpot free account. That's usually, you know, my conclusion there. Now, Let's talk a little bit about different types of HubSpot paid accounts. Uh, let's get started with marketing. If you use HubSpot mostly for marketing purposes um, and you're happy with the free package, so everything that we just talked about, but without the HubSpot branding and a few extended limits, meaning um, um, with the starter package, you, you, would have be, you would be able to do more things um, than the free package in terms of numbers of, of things you have access to, features, lists, forms, can publish and all that. Um, and you only need basic email automation after form submission. So um, 
you don't really need sort of complex workflows that split into different sub workflows. You don't need to create very flexible workflows for automating, you know, lead routing, lead assignment, creating tasks and, and so on and so on. You literally just need kind of a simple email sequence that gets published after form submission. And if you don't really, and sorry, and if you want email or chat support, then go ahead with a starter package. So with the starter package, usually you have access to some really, really basic email automation there. You can create a form and you can set up an automated email after that form, but you can't really do much apart from that. Meaning you have very big limitations when it comes to triggers you can use for your workflows and, and actions, especially actions you can use inside of your workflows. Now, if you need to automate things, if you need to go crazy and create workflows for every single thing in your business, and if you want, or perhaps if you want to schedule social media posts from HubSpot, please consider that all these things here are or, right? You don't need to agree with all these different statements to go with a professional account. It's, it's one or the other or the other and so on and so on, okay? So, you know, if you're happy with automating things and, and or <laughs> perhaps, you want to use HubSpot for social media scheduling, um, or in another situation, you want to, you know, target international audiences, meaning you need to be able to publish assets in different languages, and you want to see better website analytics, and you need more customized and adver advanced reporting, um, or you just simply want to have advanced features such as lead scoring, A-B testing inside of marketing emails and all that. If you said yes to any of these things that I've just uh, mentioned, then there's no way of escaping this. You have to get a HubSpot professional subscription. Okay. So the difference here is really in, in the automation and advanced features. You, again, as I said, you have access to basic automation with a starter package, um, but that's about it. And obviously you have access to everything you have access in the free package, but without the HubSpot branding there. So this is the main difference between these two packages here. Um, if you use HubSpot mostly for sales purposes and you only need basic conversation routing, meaning new conversations that come in, you just need to assign them and then that's about it. You don't need to do anything changing properties based on that or much, much, much else. If you want to track multiple currencies, if you want to use payment integrations, if you want email or chat support and you're happy with the free package, but without the HubSpot branding, um, also having access to some extra features such as live chats. For example, a starter package is ideal for you. However, when it comes to automation, again, the same thing that we just discussed, if you need to automate things, meaning you want to use, for example, sales sequence, where you send automated emails to your leads, if you want to set up um, automated reminders for calls, emails, tasks, and things like that, you have to get a professional package. Automation is, is more flexible and, and basically automation is inside of the HubSpot professional package. Or if you want to ensure your team creates deals the same way, we're talking about required fields at deal creation here, or perhaps you just want to have better analytics of all your sales activities to measure team performance. If you want to use one-on-one -on -one video messaging or you want advanced features such as forecasting calculated properties and things like that, Again, yes, you, you really cannot escape. Here you need access to a HubSpot professional subscription. It's the same thing as the marketing topic. You, if you want to automate things, if you want to have sequences, if you want to be able to, um, I guess, save time with manual input, then yes, then, then um, you need a professional package. A starter package for sales is the same thing. So you have everything that you have in a free sales package. Uh, without the extra, you know, HubSpot branding and some really nice features as well, um, such as payment integrations, multiple currencies and things like that, live chats and, and, and this and, and so on. So um, what I find my conclusion from this is that professional level subscriptions are ideal for complex automation. When I mean complex automation, it doesn't necessarily mean, um, I'm not talking about size, right? So I'm not talking about the size of your sequence or the size of your workflow. I'm talking about just simply being able to be more flexible with your workflow, with your sequence. Um, again, you have access some, to some really, really basic automation inside of Starter. 
both for sales and marketing. However, if you want to be flexible with that, if you want to create workflows from scratch because you need specific things, then you need a professional subscription. Um, and to finalize, I can mention that HubSpot has a bundle for a starter suite. And um, if I'm not wrong, it starts at $50 a month. So if you don't need complex automation, but you want to have paid features, because for example, you, you, you don't need HubSpot branding, sorry, because for example, um, you really don't want to have HubSpot branding in your assets or um, yes, you need support. You need to have access to the HubSpot support team. Then um, consider the, the uh, starter bundle because it, it puts together in one package only all the starter package from different packages. And so you'll be able to, to get started using a HubSpot paid account at a very friendly price in comparison to the other packages. And so definitely, you know, make use of this offer. Um, and yes, you know, I really hope this was helpful to you. Again, the question on what kind of HubSpot account is best for me, it really depends on your business needs. It really depends on, on what you're looking to accomplish with HubSpot. Of course, your budget as well, team size as well. There's a lot of things to consider that. So summary of everything that we just said, um, get started with a list, put, put together a list with your HubSpot needs and then do some research on, on whether HubSpot addresses these specific topics or not. I hope that the general advice that I gave you um, was valid and helpful. And thanks for watching.